All right, hey, what's up, guys? Sick Designs here. What you're seeing right in front of you is my completed PC build that I just did uh, recently, about a week ago. Um, now, basically, I'm just making this video uh, to give you guys an update on what I've been doing and to let you guys know that I was planning on doing a tutorial here, but um, it kind of fell apart on me. Uh, several things happened, and I basically uh, did not get the tutorial finished, um, but nevertheless I figured I could at least make this video and kind of show off um, what I did and talk about the parts that I used and in case anyone else out there is um, thinking about building their own uh, system so uh, to be honest this was my very first uh, computer build I've ever done I've never built a PC before and um, I basically did this on my own uh, I found it to be pretty straightforward and not too complicated uh, so if I can do it, I know a lot of you guys out there can do it as well. Um, so basically, just kind of wanted to let you guys know that there isn't going to be a tutorial on this like I initially planned, but I am going to go a little in depth and talk about all the components of this computer and um, why I picked those parts and uh, make some recommendations to you guys. So basically, all you're seeing right now, like I said, is the completed build. Um, I'm pretty pleased with it. It's ran fine. It's got Windows 7 Ultimate 64-bit on it. Um, I've thrown GTA 4 at it, Crisis 3, Assassin's Creed 3, um, Far Cry 3, a lot of uh, gra really graphic intensive games at it and it's performed really well. And I actually made this PC on a thousand dollar budget almost exactly. now. Uh, technically, without the mouse, keyboard, uh, shipping and handling charges, and tax, uh, this p particular build is actually about 840 bucks. But, like I said, with all that tacked on there, it almost cost me another $200. So, really, all, this whole computer, uh, like I said, the computer itself, case, mouse, keyboard, everything but the monitor, is right at $1,000. Uh, like I said, I'm going to go talk about the parts that I use, but I'm also going to list um, the parts down in the description and the prices of them so uh, you guys have that available to you if you're looking to do a similar build um, now like I said this is a gaming PC I've never really had a computer like this so I decided to build myself a gaming PC so that's why uh, it's a gaming computer obviously you could build an editing computer uh, you know any kind of computer you want uh, you just need to make sure that your parts are compatible with each other when you go into buying these and um, you know everything's going to work when you get this together so um, I'll go into more depth about that here in a second but right now I'm just showcasing it um, the computer itself and showing you guys it booting up and it's running great which is awesome and um, yeah so I think that'll cover this part and uh, the next part uh, coming up I'm going to talk about the parts that I use so um, yeah Okay, so with all that covered, let's go ahead and talk about some of the parts I use for this build. Uh, the first part, or piece we're going to be talking about is the CPU. And in this case, for this particular uh, gaming build, I bought the Intel Core i5 Quad Core 3570K processor. Now the K uh, stands for uh, basically overclocking. So I got this processor because it's good to be, um, it's meant to be overclocked. And... Uh, it's a really fast processor. I've had this PC built for about two days now. I've had no issues. It runs really good. And uh, like I said, it's quad core, so it's definitely um, good for gaming. Uh, it's a fast processor, and uh, I would highly recommend it. I picked this particular processor up on Amazon for $210. Okay, so the second part of this build, as far as the RAM is concerned, I bought some 8 gigabyte DDR3 Corsair Vengeance RAM. Um, this is uh, some good RAM, I believe. Um, I read a lot of good reviews on it. It's worked very well on my build so far, and uh, I believe I picked this up for about $67 is about how much 8 gigs of RAM cost me. Um, that's plenty good for gaming. Um, there's no game out today that's going to use more than 8 gigs, so that's plenty. Um, that's what I would recommend for your gaming build, and I would also recommend this, uh, this brand, Corsair Vengeance, is very good, and uh, it's solid, and it's just some good RAM in my opinion. So. There's the RAM that I chose for this build. Uh, 
So right now you're probably just wondering what is that? And it's just a plain cardboard box. Well, inside of that was my one terabyte Western Digital Caviar Blue uh, hard drive. I picked this one up for. Let me check here on my parts list. Um, Sixty-five dollars and sixty-three cents on Amazon. Uh, it was one terabyte, and the speed was 7,200 RPM. So for a gaming build and a hard drive, I definitely recommend at least a 500 gigabyte hard drive at the very least. And definitely, I mean, for 60 or 65 dollars, you really can't beat one terabyte uh, of memory from a pretty good brand, in my opinion. Western Digital is very good, uh, very good manufacturer, and. Um, <laughs> Uh, like I said, don't get anything less than 7200 RPM for a hard drive. Uh, 7200 RPM is pretty good. It's a pretty fast hard drive. So definitely, uh, if you're going to buy a hard drive, get a one that's 7200 RPM. This has worked good so far. haven't had any issues with it. And uh, once again, one terabyte Western Digital hard drive. All right, so the next part to this build uh, was the one of the most important parts. Uh, was the graphics card and the particular graphics card I chose was a 2 gigabyte GDDR5 memory EVGA GeForce GTX 650 Ti super super clocked um, that was a mouthful um, now those of you that uh, know graphics cards a little bit may be wondering why I didn't go uh, get like the 660 or the 650 Ti boost or maybe the 670 well I wanted to keep this build at $1,000 or less, and if I would have upgraded uh, to the um, 660 or 670, uh, it would have easily been looking at over $200. This particular graphics card was, I believe, $170 on Amazon, um, and so far, um, it has ran flawless uh, with my build. Like I said, I can get... Um, 40 frames per second on max settings on Crisis 3, which is probably, as of right now, one of the most demanding games on a PC. So uh, this card has performed uh, actually better than my expectations, and I would highly recommend it. It's definitely probably the best card you can get for the price uh, for the price range, and um, it's not really an entry level card. It's not I wouldn't classify it as a higher end card. It's more of a mid range graphics card, but. Um, it's definitely a great card, and I would recommend it to anybody out there that's uh, going to do a gaming build. It's Like I said, it's fairly cheap, and for what you get, for the money, it's, it's definitely worth it in my opinion. Uh, a lot of good reviews on it, and um, that is the graphics card I chose for this build, and why. Alright, so the next part that we're going to be talking about to this build is the power supply. And this is probably one of the most essential parts, uh, or one of the most... Um, one of the things you have to pay attention to the most uh, when buying um, because uh, this power supply needs to be able to power every single component inside your computer so you want to make sure that it's definitely got enough wattage and that you get um, a power supply that is 80 plus certified and there's different levels there's bronze silver gold and I believe there's even platinum uh, 80 plus uh, means that it's a certified power supply uh, true wattage, which means if it says there's 650 watts in this case, you're going to get the full 650 watts. There's a lot of cheaper power supplies out there that say that you're going to get this uh, wattage out of it and you don't get near as much as it says it or they advertise it as. So uh, this is a trusted brand and there's really good reviews on it. XFX is a brand, of course. Um, 650 watts. Um, now this isn't a modular power supply, so there are a lot of cables that come with this. So it can make cable management a little difficult, but this uh, this particular power supply is optimized for crossfire a crossfire or SLI setup. So um, AMD if you're going with cross uh, crossfire or Nvidia if you're going with SLI Radeon crossfire. Uh, so um, I try to get a power supply that would be um, uh, you know powerful enough to obviously power everything in this computer and also for future upgrades. I thought about going with this for the 750 watt power supply, but obviously I went ahead and went with the 650 watt. Um, I picked this particular power supply up for, I believe it was $90. Uh, I have my parts list right next to me. I'll go ahead and check. Yep, $89.89 on Amazon. It was about $90 bucks, uh, for this power supply. And so far it's worked great. And I would recommend this. Like I said, 80 plus. If you buy a power supply, make sure it's 80 plus certified. Don't slack on the power supply. You can find them fairly cheap for 25, 30 bucks, but um, I would not buy a power supply that cheap. 
it's very essential that you have a good enough power supply because without that your whole system is obviously not going to run or function properly so that is the power supply i chose as far as the motherboard is concerned i got the gigabyte z77x ud3h motherboard i picked this mother motherboard up for about 140 dollars on amazon um uh, one of the main reasons was um <clears throat> it had a lot of good reviews uh, that's why I bought this um, motherboard. It also supports NVIDIA SLI, so I can have up to two GPUs uh, in my build. So if I want to buy another graphics card in the future, I have room to do so. Um, like I said, the, the reviews were really good on it, so that instantly um, um, intrigued me to buy it. And plus, it's from Gigabyte, which Gigabyte's a pretty, um, pretty uh, good manufacturer in my opinion. And also, uh, it was a uh, supported LG, LGA 1155 um, configuration, so that meant that it would uh, go with my LGA 1155 CPU. The socket would match up, so that's very important when you go to do a build, is you make sure that your CPU is also compatible with your motherboard or vice versa. So, uh, this is a good motherboard in my opinion. Uh, it's ultra durable, so it's got high temperature protection, humidity protection, thermostatic our electrostatic protection and power failure protection. So um, this has been, uh, in my opinion, it's worked great. I haven't had any issues with it. So and a lot of good reviews. So I, once again, I'd recommend this motherboard. Um, and like I said, it's not that costly. It's only $140. So there is a motherboard I chose for this build. Okay, and the very last component to this build, I actually bought an aftermarket CPU cooler. Um, this is the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. This was, I believe, $33 on Amazon.com. And um, the main reason why I bought this is because if I'm going to be overclocking, I need to have uh, really good cooling on the CPU, obviously. Now, this is a heat sink setup, so the fan is not going to blow directly on top of the, um, the CPU. So every CPU that you buy automatically comes with its own stock fan. And I know Intel uh, CPU stock fans come with their own um, thermal paste, thermal compound, but I actually have not installed this yet. I just kind of slacked off, was a little lazy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but I am planning on installing this CPU cooler uh, here very soon. But right now it just has the stock CPU fan in here. Uh, so like I said, main reason why I bought this um, was uh, because I figured if I'm going to be overclocking that... Uh, I need to have adequate um, cooling and um, as well as the price it seemed pretty good for the price and once again had a lot of good reviews I, before I bought any of these parts I always looked at the reviews and and check to make sure what people were saying about them that's very important and I would recommend to anybody out there that's looking to build their own PC read the reviews on the product before you buy it two most important things in my opinion building a PC you need to Read the reviews on the products you're buying and make sure everything's compatible. And before you even build a PC, you need to know what kind of PC you want to build. Is it going to be a gaming PC? Is it going to be an editing PC? You know, um, so start there. Plan out what you want to do, what you what you want before you go out and start shopping for parts. Um, so anyways, like I said, this is a gaming PC, obviously. And I've ran several games on it and it's ran just fine. I played Dead Island, Riptide, and literally on high settings, I'm getting like 100 plus frames per second. So I've also played Hawken and Planet Side 2 and a couple other games and frame rates 90 plus and running on, on high settings. So this setup for me has worked excellent. And um, if you guys would like to do an identical build, uh, be my guest. You obviously know uh, all these parts work and function and this build works really well. So if you want to, go right ahead. Um, 